Hey everybody, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oro Reports. You know, I'm feeling very sad that this video may be the last time I get to talk about the Swan Princess on my blog show. For those of you who may be new to my channel, the Swan Princess is a truly underrated animated film, and even though I never saw it in theaters back in 1994, I consider it as one of my personal favorites ever since I rented it from Netflix in 2004. Also, I wouldn't have known about this movie if I hadn't seen the Swan Princess promo ad on the inserted Dr. Seuss VHS. Plus, I have my late grandmother, Joanne Preschel, to thank for having me watch it at her place. May she rest in peace. Anyway, starting in 2014, after recovering from my first giant cell tumor surgery on my left femur, I blogged the fifth movie, A Royal Family Tale, which to this day is still the most viewed video that I've ever made. Two years later, after returning home from a New York vacation with YMCA's New Horizons, I blogged the sixth movie, Princess Tomorrow, Pirate Today, where Elise was the main character for her first time. In 2017, I got to blog the seventh movie, Royally Undercover, and the fourth movie, The Swan Princess Christmas, which surprisingly was commented on by the folks at the Swan Princess group. In 2018, I blogged the eighth movie, A Royal Mystery, and in 2019, several months after I became the very first featured fan on the Swan Princess website, I blogged the ninth movie, Kingdom of Music. And after I attended the 25th anniversary pink carpet event in Los Angeles, I got to blog the first movie. And believe you me, this was between the times when Huey Toonmore and Isaac the Media Hunter did their own reviews on it which are both awesome, by the way. In early 2020, I got to share my thoughts on the second movie, The Secret of the Castle, and the third movie, The Mystery of the Enchanted Treasure, before going under COVID lockdown. Plus, I got to include The Swan Princess on my top 30 personal favorite animated movies countdown video in honor of my 30th birthday, and I got to blog the 10th movie, A Royal Wedding, which was sent to me as a belated birthday present, along with this certificate and this animation cell. Plus, I made a top 10 countdown video with the seventh movie, Royally Undercover, taking the number one spot. In 2021, me and several other Swan Princess fans got to help promote their commemorative watches, in late summer 2022, I got to email a question regarding the time gap between the stories of the 8th and 9th movies, and they answered, about five years have passed between the two movies. And last year, in 2023, I got to blog the 11th movie, A Fairy Tale is Born, which I thought was pretty good and interesting not only due to it centering mostly on Queen Uberta, but I liked that it featured Odette's late parents, King William and Queen Aubrey, as well as it showing Princess Odette as a baby. It featured a sweet and emotional song between Odette and Aubrey, and I thought Odette and Derek's coronation, while disastrous, was very tear-jerking. And then, not long afterwards, my blog made it to the front page of the Schomburg Daily, which made me happy that the people who watched it loved it. And lastly, during February of this year, I made a very special video to celebrate my fifth anniversary of being a Swan Princess fan, which was recently mentioned on the Schomburg Daily too. Anyway, in honor of the Swan Princess's upcoming 30th anniversary this year, I'll be sharing my thoughts on the 12th and final movie in this magical animated franchise. Released to digital on September 19th 
and to DVD on October 24th, 2023. The movie is The Swamp Princess, Far Longer Than Forever. So, on for the plot of the movie. Eager to discover the truth about his supposed dead father, King Derek and Queen Odette set off on an epic adventure. As newly appointed members of the Council of Crowns, Derek and Odette begin to smoke out the true story, but an attempt on their life drives them to undercover where they pose as the Barrymores, world-famous traveling magicians. With the help of Lord Rogers, Scully, and their animal friends, Derek and Odette piece the mystery together, only to have it all unravel. So, what are my thoughts on this movie? Well, in my personal opinion, this was an epic, fun, and beautiful film finale. And to further explain what I mean, let's move on to Mustang Notes. Now... This is the second Swan Princess movie to get a DVD release in the year 2023. Secondly, the film's subtitle shares the same name of the famous love song from the first movie. As for the animation, well, while it's not exactly perfect, I still think it's pretty good. And while the film barely shows the Kingdom of Schomburg, I like that it still features the castle where the Council of Crowns meet, along with new places like the Harbor Village Inn, where Odette, Derek, and their friends make base while secretly investigating what actually happened to King Maximilian, Tiff Griffin's Tavern, and Unscapable Island, where King Maximilian has been shipwrecked all these years. As for the story, well, I like that it begins right where the 11th movie, A Fairy Tale is Born, left off, which was right after Odette and Derek became king and queen of Schomburg, and I like that it contains several references to past Swan Princess movies. Not just A Fairy Tale is Born, but also A Royal Wedding, A Royal Mystery, Royally Undercover, and Princess Tomorrow, Pirate Today. And now, Let's talk about the movie's song numbers. And for right now, I want to talk about two of them. The first song to talk about is Believe Your Eyes, sung by Odette and Derek as the Barrymore magicians while convincing the Council of Crowns that they are not whom the Council thinks they are. To me, this song is very whimsical and magical, and I like all the magic tricks that Derek and Odette perform. Plus, part of this song almost makes me think of a few of the songs from 2017's The Greatest Showman. The second song is You Are Home, sung by Odette, Derek, Uberta, Crispin, and the Schomburg villagers in order to welcome King Maximilian back home. To me, this song is very emotional, tear-jerking, and I find it reminiscent of to the We Are One song from Royally Undercover. Plus, I find it kind of surprising that this song features a cameo from Lucas's parents. Speaking of which, one thing that I really nitpick regarding this movie is that Odette and Derek's daughter, Princess Elise, and her boyfriend, Prince Lucas, don't appear in this movie at all. Sure, they were also absent in a royal wedding, but I give that movie credit for giving a reason why they were due to them attending a tulip festival in Borromeo. But here, they don't give a precise reason at all. <sighs> anyway, let's move on to the characters and their voice actors. Let's start with our main characters, Queen Odette and King Derek, voiced by Nina Herzog and Yuri Lowenthal. In this movie, not long after becoming king and queen of Schomburg, Odette and Derek not only join the Council of Crowns, but after their carriage gets sabotaged, they go undercover to find answers as to what really happened to King Maximilian. Throughout this movie, not only do they disguise themselves as the Barrymore magicians, but they also disguise themselves as two spies 
named Mr. and Mrs. Smith with a Y, and two pirates named Big Nose and Bad Sally. Next are Lord Balthazar Rogers and Scully, both voiced by Joseph Madrano. During this film, Rogers and Scully both team up with Odette and Derek to investigate the disappearance of King Maximilian. To me, the most memorable scene they're involved in is when they find Max's journal at the Council of Crowns and when they interrogate Tiff at his tavern. Also, I like that Rogers uses his C.J. Pennypacker disguise again and when he disguised himself as Derek during the scene where Odette and Derek convince the Council of Crowns that they are indeed the Barrymores and the scene where Scully accompanies Derek to Unskimble Island. Next up are Odette's animal friends, Speed, Puffin, and Jean-Bob, voiced again by Clayton James, Gardner Jaff, and Doug Stone. Like in the past 11 movies, these guys are great supporting characters, and during this movie, they help Odette and Derek by dressing up as the three mutts, this, that, and the other. While they do so, Speed and Jean-Bob look through King Edgar's castle only to find a page from a book that he's writing while Puffin talks to an old harbor manager named Clem. Next is Derek's mother, Queen Uberta, voiced again by Catherine Levine, who narrated a royal family tale and voiced Bridget in a few previous movies and she voices an innkeeper named Mrs. Gunderman. Now, Uberta's role in this movie may not add too much, but during the beginning of the film, she tells Derek that Maximilian was accused of making a deal with pirates against the will of the Council of Crowns, which I think could explain why she didn't want Elise attending Sailor Boot Camp with Rogers during the sixth movie. As for Mrs. Gunderman, well, in my eyes, she's a bit weird and eccentric, especially when she snoops around and spies on her guests, which she calls digging for facts. Also, in certain parts of the film, Gunderman spreads gossip papers throughout the whole village, which almost blows Derek and Odette's cover. However, after the royal couple explain to her why they're undercover, they make a deal that Gunderman can be the first to tell the story regarding the truth of Maximilian's disappearance on the condition that she truly keeps their secret and that she'll get a guaranteed exclusive. Next up, we have Queen Wixom and her husband, King Howard, voiced by Lynn Gallagher and Joe Ochman. Now, I've already mentioned that Wixom was the main antagonist of the 11th movie, where she and Uberta were rivals due to her mutts, this, that, and the other, beating her poodles at the Royal Dog Show. And during Odette and Derek's coronation, she sabotages the ceremony as revenge for Uberta autographing her arm with permanent ink. Anyway, during this film... Wixon and Howard don't really do too much, aside from having Magnus doing a painting for them. And later, after giving Uberta said painting, she and Wixom make amends. Which, to me, was a very touching moment. Next we come to Crispin, voiced by Kirby Lay, who also voiced Magnus. Crispin is a former pirate who's been doing accounting business for 25 years. When Derek and Odette interrogate him as the Smith spies, one of his tattoos reveal that he was indeed sailing under the flag of Captain Firebeard, just as they suspected. And he helped steal Max's ship and took Max to Unskivable Island. To me, due to what Crispin has gone through over the past 30 years, he seems like a very sympathetic character. And later on, he becomes a supporting character by taking Odette and Derek on board Captain Firebeard's ship and helping them escape. Next is King Edgar, also voiced by Kirby Lay. Like King Howard, Edgar is one of the members of the Council of Crowns. 
Throughout most of the movie, Odette and Derek suspect him for being the one responsible for King Maximilian's disappearance due to his skeptical and grumpy personality. However, it's later revealed that King Edgar is an author who writes pirate stories, which makes him kind of similar to what Queen Uberta was in the eighth movie, A Royal Mystery. Another character to talk about is Captain Firebeard, voiced by Richard Epcar, whom was in Digimon Adventures. He voiced Captain Sankham in The Legend of Korra, Little John in Once Upon a Studio, and of course, Xehanort's Heartless Ansem and Terra Xehanort in the Kingdom Hearts game series. Now that's just awesome. Anyway, when Derek and Odette meet Firebeard as Big Nose and Bad Sally, he tells them that he and his crew kidnapped Max and put him in a small boat which drifted off to Unscapable Island. Plus, they were the ones who attacked the harbor afterwards, and he tells them who was behind King Max's disappearance. Moving on, we also have King Ivan, also voiced by Joe Oatsman, who voiced Mangler in A Royal Family Tale, Trapper the Raccoon in N-Wave's Bigfoot movies, and Jiminy Cricket in a few of the Kingdom Hearts games. As I said before, King Ivan became the chairman of the Council of Crowns after King Maximilian disappeared and King Sebastian stepped down. And I thought he was a good friend to all of his fellow royals. However, after Odette and Derek meet Captain Firebeard, they learn that King Ivan made a deal with him and his crew that he would get rid of all his rival pirates in exchange for making King Maximilian disappear. Later, when Odette and Derek orchestrate a ruse to trick him into a confession, which nearly made me think of A Christmas Carol, Ivan admits that he plotted against Max as an act of jealousy of his compassion and mercy, which made him the next head of the Council of Crowns. And thanks to Rogers, the Council was able to listen to the whole confession. And finally, we have Derek's long-lost father, King Maximilian, voiced again by Jesse LaPierre. Now, I previously said that Max is a daring and noble king, and he was kind to help a group of thieves find work before he disappeared. Also, throughout this movie, Max gets a lot of character development, and I can't believe that he's been shipwrecked on Unscapable Island for 30 years. Also, to me, the parts where Max reunites with Derek and his wife, Uberta, really made me cry in happiness. However, I still wonder what it'd be like if Max met Elise and Lucas. Anyway, let's move on to my final words. Overall, The Swan Princess, Far Longer Than Forever, is a wonderful finale to this strong animated fantasy franchise. The animation is pretty good. It has an engaging detective story with cute humor, as well as nostalgic references to past movies and decent songs, which range from fun and whimsical to tear-jerking and emotional. Plus, the main characters make a great team together, both as husband and wife and king and queen. The supporting characters are memorable and funny at times, and the antagonists range from sneaky to swashbuckling to twisted. So, if you folks love The Swan Princess and want to check this movie out, then be sure to give it a watch. And be sure to share it along with the other 11 movies with your family and your children. I give this movie a 93% out of 100. Phew! Wowie! Zowie. I can't believe I'm done with blogging these movies, even if it had to take me about 10 years to do it. But at the same time, I feel like it was all worth it because I do hope that someday, if I can gain a family of my own, 
I can share this franchise with them and I really feel proud not only for being the very first featured fan on the Swan Princess website, but to be part of this magical group. And I want to thank all the people who made these movies possible, along with director Richard Rich, screenwriter Brian Neeson, producer Selden Young, producer Jerry F. Brown, along with Eden Young, Ellie Shelton, Nathan Higa, and all the wonderful people at Swan Princess. You guys really have been awesome, and may all of you have a magical future. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to join me for my next blog, where we reunite with a lovable animated dragon, Mustang Power.